everyone, welcome back to my spooky mansion. As it so happens, I'm really tired right now. I was up all night trying to convince the spiders in the basement to start paying rent. Needless to say, living here has been a real adventure. I might even be possessed by a demon. Whoa, excuse me. Anyway, I was just going to pour myself a bowl of cereal and, hey, what's this? There's a prize inside? Good thing I got to this cereal box before any of the ghosts did. Ah, better luck next time, guys. Well, let's see what's inside. Whoa, what was that? Oh my gosh, the sky had a baby from my cereal box. Well, guess I'd better climb it and see where it leads. Ah, nice to finally reach the surface. My hands are still burning from that climb. Oh hey, there's someone over there. Oh no! Oh, bye then. Anyway, being on this eerie ship really reminds me of an old Spongebob game I used to play. Funnily enough, it wasn't actually an official one. It was a fan game where you had to find your way off a ghostly ship. A sort of point-and-click styled adventure. Let's use this old ghostly computer to see if we can find it. Oh hey, it looks like Spongebob had a bunch of other spooky games made for it. They all have a Halloween theme. Well, that seems seasonally appropriate. While we look for the scary boat game, let's check out some of these unofficial creations. Strap yourselves in, me hearties, because it's time to look at some Spongebob Halloween fan games. You could often find them on gaming websites such as y8.com, or as I like to call it, Yate. They reused music and other assets from official Spongebob Flash games, but they often had their own concepts. Let's start by looking at Spongebob Squarepants Halloween Run. This was made by Kong Jet, whose mascot was King Kong riding a jet. But now as we can see, this game reuses a working man Spongebob model with a pumpkin on his head. And ugh, look at this guy. The brainy crowbars are a nice touch though. But at the start, he steals a bunch of candies from a giant pumpkin. Now you have to get them back. So here we go. Whoops, let me try again. Uh, and yeah, this game uses the diet SpongeBob voice clips that could often be found in Sarbacan games. But this game actually isn't too hard. You just have to figure out how the controls work. You click to jump and move the mouse to coordinate where you want to land. Even so, the platforms aren't super thick, so it's easy to fall through them. But you grab the stolen candy and try to reach the finish. You can see how far along you are with the meter at the top. And watch out for bad guys. Come on, SpongeBob, that guy's so small you could practically absorb him. This one's a little rough around the edges, but simple in concept. Another one that reuses a lot of the same assets from this one is SpongeBob Halloween Truck Zombie Shot. This was taken from poopoogames.com, but this exact concept of driving a truck, shooting at enemies, and upgrading a ton of stats was a very popular one at the time. This game is basically the same as another Poo Poo Games game called Mario Truck Zombie Shot. Actually, there are a lot of games that look exactly like this. Must have been a trend. But hey, I played them as a kid, so they succeeded in reaching an audience. But yeah, you drive a truck and shoot at zombie thugs. You also have a million things you can upgrade. And don't even try to run the thugs over. You can only shoot them. But this game is surprisingly tough before you get any upgrades. I had trouble getting through the first stage. So let's move on. This is Halloween Defense, also from the Poo Poo Games website. If you're expecting a tower defense game, we've got something a little more... unique. We start with 40 candies and have a selection of things we can buy to help ourselves battle zombies. Mostly, you'll need to buy a character and their respective weapons so they can fight for you. They have power and speed meters so you can see how strong they are. But this is what the game looks like. SpongeBob and Patrick are on top of SpongeBob's pineapple and trying to fend off oncoming zombies with whatever they bought, aka their friends that do all the fighting for them. Let's see what that looks like. <laughs> Yeah, that's pretty much all you do. It's okay. So let's shake things up a bit. There was another selection of games that were made with reused assets from Nick.com, but they took a different approach. This is SpongeBob Halloween Day. 
Unfortunately, you do kind of need a second player for this. Someone has to control Spongebob with the arrow keys and Patrick with WAD. Sadly, I'm only one person. <sighs> but thankfully, I might have another person inside me. So the models in this game are taken from Dutchman's Dash, a game that brings on a lot of frustrating, but oddly fond memories. As Spongebob and Patrick, you have to grab pumpkins that can only be collected by one player in particular. You jump through obstacles and activate levers so your partner can ride moving platforms. <sighs> oh, you're right, Demon. Your hitbox is way too big. Yeah, the Flying Dutchman here is trying to kill you, so you have to work around him. Only problem is, he can hit you from pretty far away. It's hard to tell when it's safe to move past him. <sighs> Whoa, calm down, it's just a Flash game. Yeah, this one's really hard, and you really need a second player for it. So let's check out a similar one that only needs one player. See you later, demon. This is Spongebob Hell. He looks awfully happy to be in hell. So Mr. Spirit Halloween here is gonna give us the instructions. Spongebob collect pumpkins. All pumpkins must be collect in order to pass the level. Well then, I feel I've been given all the necessary information. Let's give it a go. Uh, hello? What do you mean I'm stuck already? I can't even die. I have to go back to the stage select to start all over. But yeah, you jump on platforms, collect pumpkins, shoot enemies, and reach the haunted house at the top of the stage to win. But this fire is awful and almost always hits me. I don't like jumping over it. Oh. Oh. We lost. That was sudden. Oh well, next game. This one is called Halloween Under Sea, and also uses models from Dutchman's Dash. Check out this intro. Honestly, same. Yeah, it has the same concept as Halloween Run. You jump over holes, grab pumpkins, and coordinate where you land with the mouse. You can even grab power-ups, the best one being the one that makes you jump significantly higher. Just make sure you make the landing. This one's okay. But now here's the last one before we get to the ship game. This is SpongeBob in Halloween 2. Though I'm not entirely sure where SpongeBob in Halloween 1 is. Oh, hi, Frank and Bob. And ugh, could they have picked a more eye-straining font to write the instructions in? I'm also not sure what they're trying to say here. SpongeBob rhythmically allows to fly higher. Of course, this is not necessary skills to complete the level. Are they saying we have the ability to fly, but it isn't necessary to win? Well, that's just an outright lie. You can't reach anything unless you fly in this. Nice jeans, though. You have to fly up to platforms and collect masks. That means you have to move to every corner of the stage to find them. Oh, hi, Plants vs. Zombies Zombie. Assets from that game were really popular in these fan-made Flash games. And I imagine these green guys are running around after being smashed with a hammer. Oh, come on, what do you mean that isn't enough? It's on the button, isn't it? So yeah, this game is a little odd, but has a straightforward concept. So now let's get on with the big one. Without further delay, I'd like to take a look at a game by one of my favorite childhood Flash game companies. If you used the internet back in the late 2000s, you might have come across a company called Inca Games. They were widely known for their political games, as well as their ones themed around the film franchise Saw. They often featured protagonists such as Obama or other public figures that needed to strategically survive a series of traps. And we've actually checked them out on this channel before. If you remember our video Good Spongebob Fan Games, we looked at a Spongebob game they made based on Saw. This was another Spongebob game they made, but it wasn't exactly Saw-themed, though it kept the usual point-and-click format needed to survive traps. It isn't Halloween-themed either, but I'm breaking that rule here because it's horror-themed and that's enough for me. This is Bob Ship Escape. Now, while this game did have an English version, I elected to play it in its original Spanish release. Why? I don't know, I guess I just wanted to learn a new language. There isn't that much dialogue anyway. It starts rather abruptly, and as we can see, we're on a ghost ship. Hopefully there aren't any stealth missions this time. There's also a weird fish in a robe here. I wonder if he happens to own a pool that you can see the future in. But nah, he was actually the boatman in the Saw game. Good to see him again. We have three items in our inventory that I guess we just found lying around. Hey, it wouldn't be a pirate ship without its customary shield and colorful globs of Play-Doh. 
They're actually totems. So when we click on this guy, we can either fight him, talk to him, or look at him. You don't really use all these extra options in this game. If you try to fight him, SpongeBob just says, No lo creo. But by talking to him, SpongeBob says he needs to get off the ship. The man says he'll help SpongeBob, but only if he finds the crown he lost. This sign also gives us an important message that I completely ignored because I couldn't read it. It tells us that a draft can divert malignant powers. So we click around to explore the ship, moving inside to find a babam and many other rooms. We go around collecting things and activating switches, but be careful. Pressing this button will cause a platform to come down with an octopus version of Albert Wesker on it. Yeah, if you played Obama Resident Evil, he turned into an octopus at the end. Wow, I really need to cover all the Inca games in order. That can be my next big series. But yeah, Wesker Puss kills you. Plankton also kills you, because I guess he owns this ship. If you enter his room unarmed, he'll push a button to electrocute you with a deadly carpet. So for the time being, let's activate this minigame here. Oh hi Pigsaw. And who said this wasn't a Saw game? You have to push these big boxes around and try to land two of them on Pigsaw's tile spaces. It's a little hard, so you might have to start over a few times, but you'll feel really good about yourself if you can beat it. It takes some thinking. Once you solve it, you open this big metal door and find a thwomp on the other side of it. We also find this note that tells us where all the colored totems go. Oh hey, spooky ghost guy. He's back from Obama Lord of the Rings. I love the commitment to continuity in this series. I also like how he just flies off with you. But actually, you have to construct a vacuum to suck him into it. Hopefully it doesn't crash the whole game this time. You do this by making the Thwomp sneeze, which you also had to do in an earlier game. Then you shield yourself so you can collect the shell it sneezes. By combining the shell with the bag, you can make a vacuum and suck the ghost into it. Huh, I wonder if that would work in real life. Hmm. Yeah, that looks like a vacuum to me. But now you can sick the ghost on Plankton, allowing you to grab this fan and this other totem. You set the totems up the way they're laid out on the paper, then you get a present. Wow, a prize for completing a puzzle. What more could you ask for? But now we have to deal with Wesker Puss. You use the fan so its attack is deflected, then you can reach its platform. But guess what? The troll from Obama Potter is waiting at the top. So you put the bomb inside the gift to blow it up. Now you can use a stretchy hand to ride the platform and grab the crown. Much easier than getting the one from Shell City, don't you think? But once we bring it back to the fish out front, we find our troubles have only just begun. Now we get a minigame where we escape the ship by launching ourselves from a barrel into other barrels. You have to be extremely specific because if you miss one, you have to start all over again. This is way easier said than done. Yeah, it can get frustrating, but you'll eventually get the hang of it. Then when you reach land again, Plankton watches from nearby and swears to enact a new evil plan. That brings us to the end of Bob Ship Escape. Now this was a short and sweet little game. Not nearly as involved as some other Inca games, but neat and creative. I could have done without the barrel stage though. The puzzles were fun to figure out and it made for a nice little adventure. Another good installment from Inca games, as always. But I enjoyed playing through all of these and seeing what spooky creations people made for this show. With Halloween around the corner, I like being able to go through these and enjoy the holiday spirit reflected in them, as well as a bit of nostalgia. Because after all, there's no better way to celebrate a holiday than by engaging with it through something you love. Isn't that what makes Halloween so special? Anyway, I think that about does it for everything I wanted to say. Uh-oh. Oh no. They have a grandfather clock in here too? Wow, I didn't even realize I spent the whole day playing Spongebob games. Oh no, that means it's midnight. But at midnight, I... I... I lose...
No idea what just happened there. I feel like I lost control of myself again. I gotta get to the bottom of this sooner or later. Oh well. For now, I think I'd better go take a rest in this new ship of mine. It is after midnight after all. So anyway, be sure to subscribe, follow me on Twitter and Twitch, which are linked in the description below, and tune in to our next installment. Thank you for joining me, I will see you in the next memory. I'm on a spooky ghost ship so I have to survive. I put a shell inside a bag to keep me alive. I gave a troll a present but it had to explode. Now I am a murderer so that's my burden to hold. I better get off this ship, oh shoot that's a barrel. Now I can't win this mini game, so I am in peril.